Kansas shows us that under certain circumstances, even in a red state, they will push everything they have behind this. They will lie about this to people. They will use obscure language. They will use hyperbole. They will do whatever they have to do because this is effectively a it, it is a right R.I.T.E. of the left. They it is central to the identity of the Democrat Party, and they're going to fight this out everywhere they possibly can. We have to fight smart. Save as many lives as you can in as many places as you can. Kansas is another story, unfortunately, after uh, last night and what we saw there. And it is uh, disheartening. Now, there's there's a lot of moving parts here. Now, Kansas went overwhelmingly in the last election for uh, Donald Trump. And Kansas is a red state, but the state Supreme Court of Kansas had found in the state constitution, I believe, a uh, a right to a abortion. And the only way to change this, it was and this is why they had a ballot measure that was voted on last night. The only way they would change this would be an amendment to the state constitution of of Kansas. Uh, and this had to do with whether or not you could regulate abortion at all. Now, the, the way that this was framed um, is something that we're going to have to pay very close attention to uh, because what was essentially going on here was the pro-abortion side of the argument. I mean, they called themselves pro-choice. They were saying, well, they want to ban all abortions. Well, really, the referendum was just saying, that the Roe regime should not have a companion level understanding in this state at the state court for the state of Kansas, the legislature should be able to pass laws to regulate abortion. But it was pitched to people as they just want to take away all abortion and there's going to be you know, no exceptions and it's going to be very extreme. And to overcome something that is in a state constitution based on judicial interpretation and i know we're kind of getting deep into this here and i was reading about this last night to make sense of it all um it's going to be harder to do that with a referendum it's you're already going uphill plus you have the enormous abortion lobby uh nationwide that really wanted to establish a victory here money matters a lot in a state referendum it's not a it's not a candidate it's just the issue how the issue is presented to people um so this is a this was a a, a a loss a pretty big loss unfortunately in the state of kansas it failed by a margin of let's say roughly 63 to 37 percent something along those lines as i was looking at it last night and so there was a 2019 decision in which the kansas supreme court found a right to abortion as i was saying in the state constitution which was drafted in 1859. There is no right. You know, it's almost like Roe created the basis, the crappy determination by the Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade th then had this uh, after effect of the state court in 2019 in Kansas says, well, we also see in our state constitution a right to abortion. So this is why they had to get a constitutional amendment. This is what led to the referendum and uh, they were going to be getting rid of so it turns into the rhetoric around this is they're taking away your rights why are they taking away your right in the state of kansas to an abortion you say well hold on a second there is as with roe there never was a right to abortion in the state of kansas in the constitution some judge made it up but you see it's the same game that was played out nationally where they just lost but now this was at a state level. Um, you know, they they adopted um, language here that was meant to obscure the issue. Uh, Kansans for constitutional freedom was one of the groups in favor of abortion in this case, obviously. Oh, they, you've got to. The state constitution says you have a right to abortion. We're the freedom people for abortion. Now, this is not a moment of panic because a lot of other states don't have this. If you didn't have the 
already decided 2019 abortion was in the Kansas Constitution, adopted in 1859, um, you wouldn't be running uphill in this way. But here's why I bring it up. This is where it's going to be very hard for the pro-life movement. I shouldn't say very hard. Have to be very careful in the pro-life movement to see that this is now in the realm of politics. The argument since Roe has been focused, one, on the wrongness of Roe as a decision, but also on the moral case here, the moral clarity of it is a baby in the womb. This is another human being. We must overturn Roe to protect this baby. That has gotten an enormous win as a result of uh, the case, uh, the Dobbs decision this past June. Okay. But now it goes to the states, right? It's not a nationwide ban on abortion, despite all the freak out from the libs about this. California is going to have very permissive, very expansive abortion laws. New York, other states as well. You see that. In places where it is contested, like in Kansas, the pro-life movement may have to accept the best possible outcome. And this is where you'll see some difficulties. There's going to be some debate on the right. I, I alluded to this before um, because, for example, when you talk about exceptions for uh, life of the mother, which I actually think even though some on the right say, no, you can't even. I, I think that there's a clear moral case for that. I think there's a political case to include um, uh, the. Mississippi heartbeat law, for example, there's a political uh, case to say, well, uh, we have to have some exceptions that will be in state law, because if you eliminate the exceptions, if you eliminate any um, any cases in which there can be a legal abortion in the state, you might end up with what they're going to have now in Kansas or what they will continue to have in Kansas, which is, well, abortion basically uh, until the sixth, seventh, eighth month, whatever they decide the viability line is you see what i mean don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good that's going to be very tough when you're talking about the life issue here you want to protect as many lives in the womb as you can in as many states in as many places as you can right you save all the lives you can now what does that mean as it plays out in, in different uh, different elections referendums state legislatures you may not be in the wisest position to push for um, life at conception, no abortion under any circumstance. Life begins at conception, no abortion under any circumstances whatsoever. You're probably going to lose in a lot of states if that is what the legislative, as a matter of law, that is what the push. You're probably going to lose. And losing means the left, which is still pushing. The New York Times just had an editorial published on why do we treat miscarriage and abortion differently. This was in the New York Times. This is like asking, why do we treat your grandfather's heart attack differently from you pushing your grandfather down a flight of stairs to his death? These are clearly morally different circumstances. But they have, they're asking the question out loud. They're pushing this. See? It's no big deal. What's the problem? They have no moral foundation for their decisions. The abo pro-abortion left has completely lost its mind. All nine months of a pregnancy. And that is not an exaggeration. State of Colorado just passed an all nine month of a pregnancy state level abortion law signed by Jared Polis. So other states are doing this too. It's effectively the same situation, New York, California. They want all nine months of a pregnancy and they're going to be dishonest. My friends, you are fighting against delusion and evil here. You're going to have people that are saying, well, what about this? Let's look at the ectopic pregnancy numbers. Let's let's look at what 90, 98 percent of abortions, 99 percent of abortions actually are elective procedures for people who don't want to have a kid right now. But they're not defending that. They're not saying, yeah, you know, it's been two months, three months into a pregnancy and a woman is just deciding doesn't want to have a kid right now. So she's going to actually terminate the pregnancy. She's going to end a life in the womb. They're not even making that case. If we don't force them to make that case, if we allow them to say, oh, look at the extremes, oh, look at this, we may be right morally, and we are, but we will lose politically. And the movement has to understand this is now a political, and I think they do, and I, I know some of the prominent voices in the pro-life movement, and they're doing, look, 
they've just had a, a miraculous change of, uh, of, rea of, of situation because of the Dobbs decision. And thanks to the brave conservatives on the Supreme Court for doing the moral and legally correct thing. And so, yes, a big victory, but the battle is not over. And Kansas shows us that under certain circumstances, even in a red state, they will push everything they have behind this. They will lie about this to people. They will use obscure language. They will use hyperbole. They will do whatever they have to do because this is effectively a it, it is a right R.I.T.E. of the left. They it is central to the identity of the Democrat Party, and they're going to fight this out everywhere they possibly can. We have to fight smart. Save as many lives as you can in as many places as you can. Look what Mississippi did. Did Mississippi go to the Supreme Court with a, an abortion ban at all state? No, Mississippi went with a gestational uh, heartbeat bill. And now maybe they can push beyond that and make it just about life of the mother, just about cases of rape and incest. Maybe they'll go even further. But in the meantime, think of the lives that are saved and think of the progress toward the most righteous outcome. It's, but I know that's tough for people. I know that's, that's, a, that's difficult to, to accept that you're not pushing for what is the clearly optimal moral situation. But look at Kansas. We want to win. We want to save lives. We got a lot of listeners in Kansas because our lines just lit up over the uh, referendum last night and the disappointing outcome. Um, but as I've said, there's just a, there was a lot of dishonesty around how it was presented it was about constitutional freedom wait abortion is a is a oh oh because it's some judge says it's in the state constitution then it's about freedom and being anti-big government you see they tried to confuse people they tried to confuse people about what was really going on and then it's well we're going to remove a constitutional right in the state of kansas and give the government the ability to do great that's how they won you see this is what we're up against, friends. They're not saying, yeah, we should have, uh, you know, M Medicaid providing. So so everyone funding abortion for all nine months of a pregnancy and your tax dollars should go to an abortion for any reason. No, that's not how they're going to try to keep abortion legal in states. They're going to do things like this. Trent is in northwest Kansas. He's got some thoughts for us on this one. Hey, Trent, what's going on? Hey, um, I just had a an opinion on as to some things about what happened. Um, so Kansas is, you know, a very rural community, except for about four or five big uh, metropolitan areas. Right. Um, which all happen to be the places where the big state colleges are and things like that, um, which also happen to be yeah. very liberal, liberal areas. It's like the, bl the, 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 the blueberry in the sea of, of, of red, of cranberries, right? It's kind of like Austin exactly. in Texas. Yep. If you look at the map of where all of the abortion, um, you know, keep the amendment votes are, it's all those big metropolitan areas, which, again, is the majority of the population of the state. You know, where I'm at, the biggest town and within 100 miles of me is 5000 people. Right. You know, right. But I mean, but Trump so, won like 56 to 41 over Biden statewide in 2020. And it was even bigger than that in 2016. It was uh 56 to 35 percent Trump v. Hillary. So, I mean, overall, at certainly at the national level elections, it's been pretty reliably red. Right. But you got to look at it. We have a Democratic governor. Yeah, I know. It's a shame. <laughs> what can I tell you? Sometimes, sometimes it, look at Joe Manchin. Look at West Virginia. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, if someone has a D by their name, be highly suspicious, everybody. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, it's crazy. Thanks for calling in, Trent. Ben in Wichita, Kansas. Ben, what's going on? Ben? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, I just feel like, um, and no offense to your previous caller, but Wichita still holds red. Uh, he's thinking of Kansas City. But... Um, they they pretty much lied on the ads they ran for the vote no. They presented doctors who said that they would be forced to perform abortion, not allowed to perform abortions on uh, young children who were raped or had incest, and presented women who said, well, I would have died from my second pregnancy, and this law would force me to carry the 
pregnancy to term, risking my life. And that was the majority of the ads that I saw. Oh, yes. I've seen some of these ads. The ads were either about extreme things that nobody was proposing in the state legislature or vague things about freedom and the Constitution means you get to have an abortion. Ben from Kansas, Wichita, which does stay red. Thanks so much, man, for calling. I appreciate it. I thought this was important. And we just we had so many callers all from Kansas because, you know, CNN just a moment ago was running uh, on their Chiron at the bottom of the screen. Big win for abortion rights in Kansas. They're really leaning into this, obviously, very excited about the uh, continued expansive ability to uh end life in the womb i mean to terminate pregnancies little babies in the womb uh, they think this is something to be very proud of very happy about and what i'm trying to uh raise here is is everyone's understanding in all the different states where this is going to play out now that the left is going to fight really dirty on this issue um you know we we have a left-wing movement that is all in on abortion at all points in a pregnancy. And they went from pretending they agreed it wasn't a good thing to then saying that it should be celebrated. As you know, there are abortion activists who will celebrate it. They wear T-shirts sometimes that say an abortion is the best thing I ever did. I mean, it's really heinous and evil. Um, but how did Kansas end up with this referendum l- losing? Right, The referendum was to change the state constitution in Kansas. And I don't want to spend much more time on this, and we have a lot of other things to get to, but I wanted you to hear some of the ads that were run to keep this going. This confusing constitutional amendment is a slippery slope for Kansas. It gives government more power over your privacy and your personal medical decisions. Don't let politicians take away your freedom. Send a message. Vote no. That was a pro-abortion ad, everybody. Did it sound like a pro-abortion ad? Did it seem like they were saying, yeah, a baby at five months is not a baby, so do whatever you want with it? That is what they're doing. I I want you to understand what we are up against. That is the kind of thing they're, oh, they want to take away your freedom and big government's going to come after your privacy. Vote no. I think a lot of people heard that ad. And by the way, I don't say that I'm not disparaging anybody that heard the ad and thought this. I'm just saying. People are busy. People are trying to pay their bills. They're trying to, they hear that ad. They go, I don't like big government. I like freedom. I like the Constitution. Look at how disingenuous. No mention of abortion. Vote no on the referendum. No mention of abortion. And this one bothers me, I mean, as much, if not more. They also had a bunch of Christians, a bunch of clergymen, priests, deacons, that they were running pro-abortion ads with under, well, here's an example. As a pastor for over 50 years, I counsel and pray with individuals facing difficult personal decisions. Sometimes those conversations are about abortion. As Christians, we are instructed to love one another. We do so when we respect and trust women as God does. I'm voting no on the proposed amendment because it replaces religious freedom with government control. It restricts women's rights and it puts their very lives at risk. Join me and thousands of Christians in voting no. I mean, you have got to be kidding me. This guy says, oh, I'm a pastor. They got the little piano in the background. You know, trust women as God does to kill the babies in their wombs. Pretty sure that's a big no-no. This is what they did. They'll put priests out there. They'll say it's about freedom. What they won't say is... Yeah, you know, you're pregnant. You decide you don't like the guy that you that got you pregnant. You don't want to have a baby. It's been a few months. Just, you know, terminate the pregnancy. That's what they won't say. What they will say is all this other stuff. So I, I want you to understand. I know I spent more time in it, but it, it was it was stunning what they got away with in Kansas here. And how just look at the enemy here on this issue. Look at the ideology And the way that they are are going to fight and understand how we can politically oppose them effectively, effectively. Purity always and at all times may not be the best path forward. We are in a contest of politics now.